Here's a very interesting question. As we start analyzing it, all of the given information and what's asked, you're going to have fun with this. So let's just really deep dive into this. I'll remove the choices for now. We'll bring them back when it's time to finally mark the answer. So here, just focus on everything that's given and asked. Read it step by step. There is a certain computer that is programmed to play a certain game, the game of 24. And how does it play this game? Well, you see these symbols here. You see the triangle and the at the rate in the table also. These are the symbols that it replaces by what? By one of the usual operations all of us know. Plus, minus, multiply, divide. Now, it replaces them where? In some given numerical expression, which means you give the computer any numerical expression, say, 2 triangle 3, and what the computer does is, it replaces this triangle by either a plus, minus, multiplication or division symbol and then it computes the final answer. Now what happens is that once it computes the result, if the result is 24, then the computer wins. Otherwise, of course, it doesn't win. Now, for example, for my 2 triangle 3, there's no way the computer can win because whether you put a plus or a minus multiplication division, this result is never going to be 24. I can't add or subtract or multiply or divide them to get 24. So in this case, the computer will never win right? But in different expressions, the chances will be different. Now, next thing it tells us is about how the computer chooses these symbols. What is the likelihood? It basically gives you the probabilities in this table up here, probabilities with which the computer will replace these symbols with the operations. For example, if I try to read only the triangle row first, then this 0 0.4 means that the computer replaces the triangle symbol with a plus sign with a 0 0.4 probability. Similarly, the triangle symbol will be replaced by by subtraction with a 0 0.3 probability. Overall, if you see an entire row, then the sum of all four probabilities here will be 1. Why? Because the triangle symbol has to be replaced by one of these expressions. So any one of these, and it's a complete set of four operations only, that means this overall covers 100% of the chances. And I'm just seeing the split of that 100% among these four operations. Similarly, you can read the at the rate column as well. Now then, since we've understood how this is happening, read the last part. This is where it's asking you for a certain probability. What is the probability that the computer will win? Again, keep translating. Will win means that the result that the computer gets is 24. What is the probability that this happens when it is given this expression? So now, this is the expression that we are feeding to the computer. It will replace these triangle and at the rate symbols by these operations with its own respective probabilities. You just want to see that out of all of those possibilities, of all of these symbols that it could replace by, what is the chance of the computer computer really ending up with 24. So essentially, I'm going to see how is it that this thing can turn into a 24. Let's just take this to the side. Hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition, and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. Perfect. Now observe, this is one number that the computer will get after replacing the triangle symbol. This is another number, the final result. And I see there's a multiplication between them to give me 24 as the final answer. Essentially, 24 is really written as the product of two numbers. So think about all the ways in which you can do that. You can do it 1 times 24. Of course, the order can flip and it can also be 24 times 1. You can have 2 and 12. You can have 3 and 8. 4 and 6. These are really all four pairs that you can get, of course, with their own reversed order. So I'll try to see which of these here is possible in my situation. For example, is it possible for me to create a 1 times 24 here or 24 times 1? See, can I turn this into a 1? I cannot. If I add 4 and 2, that's 6. If I subtract, that's 2. Multiplication gives 8. Division gives 2. So this will never become a 1. Can this become 1? Now it'll be very easy for you to quickly check just those four operations. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing never gives you a 1. Which means that neither of these two here in the first row, these are not 
possible. Similarly, I'll think about the next one. Is it possible for me to create one of them as a 2 and the other one as a 12? Let's see. So this one, yes, I can change this into a 2. How? If I do either subtraction or division. So I'll keep this open. That means this can become a 2. But then can this become a 12? Let's see. 3 and 1. No, it can never get to a 12. Multiply, divide, plus, minus, do whatever you do. But this is impossible, which means I cannot get 2 and 12 in this order, but that doesn't mean I give up. I'll try to see if I can get 12 and 2 in this order. So think, can you create a 12 using 4 and 2? No, you can't. The greatest value you can create is going to be through multiplication and that's 8. So this is impossible. Now because I could create none of the orders here, you know, I could not create 2, 12 or 12, 2. That means this possibility is also out. Finally, let's think about 3, 8 and 4, 6, 1 by 1. So can I create 3 and 8 out of this? Let's see. I cannot create 3 from this, but I can create 3 from this for sure. So let me think about it this way. 8 here and 3 here. Let's see how that can happen. The only way I can get 8 here is by multiplying 4 and 2. And for me to be able to get 3 here, there are two ways, not just one. Either I multiply 3 by 1 or I divide 3 by 1. Both ways, this is going to happen. So I have found one good pair. I have an 8 and a 3. I'm just going to put this here this way. Finally, let me also check the last possibility, 4 and 6, if I can do that as well. First, I'll see if I can turn this into a 4 and this into a 6. That's impossible because the greatest that 3 at the rate 1 can go is 3 only. It can't be a 6. Then let me think about the flip side. What if this is to be a 6 and this to be a 4? Is that possible? So how can this thing turn into a 6? There's only one way if you change your sign to addition. 4 plus 2 is 6. And then similarly, I have to think how can this thing end in a 4? There's only one way for that also. If I add 3 and 1 and perfectly then I have found one more possibility that I have a 6 and a 4 where I'm always writing the triangle symbol first then I'm writing the at the rate. So essentially I have found out all the ways in which the computer can win. Essentially I see this as two possibilities. This is one possibility this is another. In fact, one itself is split into two possibilities because of three. But we'll deep dive into that. Now, your question was to find the probability of this thing happening, which itself is happening in two different ways, which means you are saying that you want to find the probability of one or two. They can't both happen. Therefore, I will have to find individual probabilities for these and then I will add the two probabilities this way. So with this clarity, my approach is solid. I'll now just go into the table to get the values, the individual probabilities for these operations to see how I can get these two probabilities. So let's combine everything now. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, the way we applied our process skills so comfortably in this question, in the EGMAT course you will learn how to build these process skills through purpose-built exercises. With each process skill learning activity and practice quiz pair, you will find your confidence increasing. Thus, throughout the Quant course, through over 2,200 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably navigate even the hardest of questions. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Perfect. Now we'll first try to find the first probability here, probability of event 1, where event 1 here is very clear for us that my triangle is being replaced by multiplication, at the rate is being replaced by multiplication or division. So let me write this separately. Perfect. Now I need to find the probability of both of these things happening. It's like my first event itself is split into two small events that are connected with an AND, which means when I find the probabilities of these two, then I will multiply those. So first think about the triangle being replaced by multiplication. You read the triangle row and go for the multiplication column here to land at this point too. So this way you have the probability of the first piece, this one here, as 0.2. Now similarly, find the probability of the at the rate being replaced by multiplication 
or division. Think about it this way. If I am thinking about just one, I took just that number. But if I'm thinking about multiplication or division, then essentially I am taking both of these events as a possibility. And I know whenever there's an or, I will add probabilities, which means that this entire second piece of at the rate being replaced by one of these is going to be 0.25 plus 0 0.05, which is equal to 0.3. And finally, as I said, there's an AND connecting both of these. My probability overall for this first event is going to be just this product, which is 0 0.06. This way, then I'm done with one part of my main work. Now I have to think about the second one. For this, we'll just see what the second event was. If you see, the second event was triangle being replaced by addition and at the rate also being replaced by addition. So let's see this now. Perfect. So again, notice that you have an AND connecting both of these. So once you find individual probabilities of these two, you will multiply them. So first think about this triangle being replaced by plus. So here I have it in my table, 0.4. Very quick, just a single value I'm reading. Similarly, at the rate by a plus is also the first entry in this second row. This is 0.6. And so when I combine both of these with an AND as I was supposed to, I'm simply going to multiply these two to get my overall probability of the second event, this product is going to give me 0.24. And then finally, the very last step, which was to add these two probabilities, I'm simply going to add both of these numbers to get my final answer as 0 0.30. Just see how later it just became about finding values because my approach was decided up front. If I don't create this structure up front, then it's highly likely that once I get these numbers, I don't know what to do with them. I add them, I multiply them, or I just take one of them. All of that confusion will be overcome if you decide your approach. Let's just summarize everything we did here. So very interesting question this was because of the way all of the information was presented to us. There was this table with probabilities, a very interesting game that the computer was playing when the computer wins and a certain expression was given. So we saw exactly all of the possibilities in which the computer could win and we had to find the probability of this happening. So we split it into events 1 and 2 and we found the probabilities of each of these events one by one one of which could happen. That's why there was an or here and I added. And once I found individual probabilities that itself required and an or multiple events you dealt with to major events and within the major events themselves, there were multiple minor events as well. So this question shows you the importance of deciding your approach before you jump into data. Otherwise, it's just going to be a bunch of numbers that you will not know what to do with. So always make sure you understand your data set completely, you determine your approach, then you go into the data to get your final answer.